Hey everyone, in partnership with Poseidon Bike, I'll be walking through the process of building up your new 24 inch sapling so you and your little one can get to riding today. Now it's a pretty simple build, but you will need some basic tools, including cable cutters, a set of metric Allen wrenches ranging from two to six millimeters, a Phillips head screwdriver, a pedal wrench, some bike specific grease, and a bike pump. So first go ahead and open up the box and pull out the wheels, the small parts box, and finally the bike. Use your cable cutters to snip off the zip ties and pull off the wheel covers. There's also a small plastic cap on the opposite side of the hub, which you can pull off and discard. For the rear wheel, snip off the zip ties and remove the packaging from the cassette. Then clip off the seat post and remove the packaging. Spread a thin layer of grease on the inner surface of the frame's seat tube and slide the seat post in. Secure the seat post with a five millimeter Allen wrench. If you have a work stand, you can clamp the bike from the seat post to make the process easier, but it's not required. Remove all the packaging from the bike, being careful not to scratch the paint when you cut the zip ties. Also, don't forget to remove the fork dropout cap. Then open the small parts box where you'll find the pedals, the kickstand, and the quick release skewers. Next, detangle the chain and run the chain over the front chain wheel. Then attach the derailleur by first removing the two screws on the hanger with a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. Then place the hanger on the outer side of the dropout and secure it with the two screws from the inner side of the dropout. Make sure they're tight, but don't overdo it. Next, remove the four stem faceplate bolts using a four millimeter Allen wrench. Install the handlebars such that there are no awkward twists or kinks in any of the cables. The proper orientation is shown here. Reinstall the stem faceplate, doing your best to keep the handlebar centered laterally and maintaining an equal gap from the faceplate to the stem body above and below the handlebars. Then find the rear wheel and locate the longer of the two skewers from the small parts box. Remove the nut and one of the two springs and feed the skewer through the non-drive side. Then reinstall the spring with the skinny side facing inward and thread on the nut a few turns, but don't tighten it all the way down. Install the shorter skewer on the front wheel using the same process as the rear. Again, the skewer should be fed through the non-drive side or the left side, which for the front wheel can be a little bit harder to determine. To do so, find the rotation direction arrow on the tire sidewall to determine the left and right side. Separate the front brake arms by releasing the cable noodle. Then install the front wheel by placing the wheel and the dropouts with the quick release lever on the non-drive side of the bike. While applying upward pressure on the wheel, incrementally tighten the skewer nut while periodically checking the quick release lever tension. Now this is most easily performed with the bike on the ground to ensure that the wheel is fully seated in the dropouts, but I'm doing it in the stand here. Once the quick release lever meets resistance when it's pointing straight outward, you can squeeze the lever up toward the bike to ensure proper clamping force. Then re-engage the brake by inserting the cable noodle into the brake arm. The wheel installation process is the same for the rear wheel, with the only difference being that you want to first feed the chain over the cassette as shown. Next, install the pedals, noting that they are left-right specific. Apply a bit of grease to the threads to prevent seizing and thread the drive side pedal in normally while threading the non-drive side pedal in with the reverse thread. Tighten the pedals using a pedal wrench, which is thin and easily fits between the crank arm and the pedal. Or if you don't have a pedal wrench, a 15 millimeter spanner or an adjustable wrench works as well. Pedals should be very tight, but there's no need to over tighten. Next, adjust the brakes in three steps. First, set the spring tension on both arms such that they actuate symmetrically. If one arm is moving less than the other, increase its tension using the Phillips head adjustment screw or decrease the tension on the opposing side. Fine tune the tension adjustment until both brake arms actuate evenly on both sides. Second, set the brake pad alignment by disengaging the brake noodle and releasing the tension spring. Use a five millimeter Allen wrench to loosen the brake pad and adjust it until it's flat against the braking surface on the rim and also centered radially. Tighten the pad back down and repeat on the other side. When you're finished, re-engage the tension springs and the brake noodle. Last, set the lever reach and the brake cable tension. Now, if your child has a hard time reaching the brake lever, you can set the resting point further toward the handlebars using a two millimeter Allen wrench, making it easier to reach. Once you have the reach where you like it, give the lever a squeeze. If the lever pulls all the way to the handlebar, increase the cable tension by loosening the cable pinch bolt at the brake and pulling a bit of cable through before retightening. Adjust the cable tension until the brake engages about halfway through the lever's travel. You can also use the barrel adjuster to make fine adjustments to the cable tension. You'll follow the exact same process for the second brake. Now check the adjustment of the derailleur by shifting through all the gears. While pedaling the bike, click the thumb lever to move the chain to a larger rear cog and click the index finger to move the chain to a smaller rear cog. The shifting should be set up pretty well from the factory, but if you find that it's hesitating to shift from a smaller cog into a larger one, you can turn the barrel adjuster on the shifter counterclockwise as if to unscrew it 
a quarter turn at a time until it no longer hesitates. The reverse applies if it's hesitating to shift from a larger cog down into a smaller one. Now this process is called indexing the gears and may or may not be necessary. Now if it's not shifting well, even after indexing the gears, make sure the wheel is fully seated into the frame. It's also possible that it's an issue of hanger alignment, high and low limit screw adjustment, or B screw adjustment, all of which are a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but you can check out the link in the description for a detailed video. Now one nice feature is that this derailleur has a clutch, which when engaged, helps keep the chain from slapping the frame or falling off when riding through rough and bumpy trails. To engage the clutch, turn the five millimeter Allen wrench until it clicks. You'll find that the cage is much stiffer and harder to move. You can release the clutch by pulling the lever up. Now generally you'll have slightly better shifting performance with the clutch disengaged, but if the trails are gonna get rough, it's better to engage the clutch to reduce the risk of the chain falling off or chipping the frame's paint. Next, install the included kickstand using the two five millimeter Allen bolts and then inflate the tires to within the recommended pressure range printed on the tire sidewalls. With the bike on the ground, it's time to make some final adjustments. Set the saddle height to suit the rider's size. Start with it low enough so that your child can reach the ground easily, and then incrementally raise it as they get more comfortable, but always maintain at least a slight bend in the knee when the leg is at the bottom of the pedal stroke. If necessary, rotate the handlebars left and right by loosening the two four millimeter stem pinch bolts and retightening once the bars are straight. Lastly, you should ensure that all critical bolts are tight using a torque wrench if possible. Stem faceplate bolts, stem pinch bolts, and seat post collar should all get roughly five newton meters of torque. And that completes the build of your new Poseidon 24 inch sapling. If you have questions, feel free to reach out down in the comments or reach out directly to customer support at Poseidon. Thanks again for watching and thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.